Okay, so if we're going to backlight some cool pictures, we actually need a backlight. The uh, these LED drawing pads. They're used for tracing by various artists now. They're fairly cheap, very reliable. I've got one right here. As you can see, very thin profile. So plastic with LEDs embedded in the side. It runs off the mains power, or if you've got a battery bank, it only takes five volts, so you can plug it in and use it directly. If you can plug it in. There we go. So as you'll see, various different levels of backlighting. It'll be perfect for this particular project. I've also got the next part, which you might be wondering about, which is the artwork. What I have here is some original artwork from Star Trek The Next Generation and its movies. A few years ago I snagged these on eBay and I've never gotten around to using them because there's never been something quite right or quite special enough. But I think this might be just the project. Let's have a look at what I've got. So here, we've got some of the famous little stickers that were used on the side of lots of the Star Trek panels. The cabinetry and all through the hallways. Anywhere there was something that looked technical, they'd have one of these stickers on the side. These are from the original production run that was used in Star Trek The Next Generation, 1987 or thereabouts. And these ones were from some of the movies. So we're going to include one of these on the outside of the box that we build, just to make it look as authentic as possible. Now these are pretty special. These are the backlit transparencies that were used on the original show as well. These particular ones are from Star Trek Nemesis. We've got a couple of options here. This is a transparency used on one of the data pads. A nice one of the uh, stellar cartography area and another one of a pulsar and some topography as well. We're going to use the stellar cartography one. Okay, so here we are. We've got our backlighting pad and this transparent film. As you'll see, it's so so like that, but once we punch on the power, it gets a fantastic lifelike glow behind it. Okay, our next job is to do a little bit of measuring up, make some plans, and see what we're going to need to make this project come together. Okay, well I think we've got the measurements figured out, so I'm just going to go cut some wood, a little bit of perspex or acrylic, and um, we'll be right back with some parts. Okay, so, uh, bit messy job. Here's what we've got so far. So effectively we're making a box. Part of it's going to be cut out at the front. So I've got a couple of sides, which will all go together like so. Which all go together roughly like so. There's going to be a front with holes cut out, which is going to allow the graphics to show through. So, more or less, making a very simple box. We've also cut out as a piece of perspex or acrylic. This is going to go between the. Well, it's going to go on top of the transparent film, uh, the artwork, like so, so that people touching it don't rub off the art. It is only a print after all, no matter how good don't want it getting damaged over time. The Perspex is um, going to be mounted behind the wood, like so. So you can see we're making a bit of a sandwich, basically. What I'm just going to do now is mark where this power button is, because we're going to need to be able to reach through and turn it on at will, and then I'll cut that out using a jigsaw. So I'm just going to get a wee marker pen. Unfortunately, this is very easy because I can already see through it. There we go. I'm just going to go cut that out now as well. Okay. Cut out a wee notch here that's going to go over the power control just like so. Just going to sand that so it doesn't have any sharp edges. I say sand, I think I mean file. So, find myself a wee file that will do the job here. That looks appropriate to me. I don't know what they're for. So 
So I'll just go cut another piece of perspex. I'll be right back. Okay. <laughs> Messy business. Okay, second piece of perspex. I think I'll just try and file this very carefully and um, even up the edges. Nice clean piece of perspex. Trickiest part, part from filing, is usually peeling off this protective cover. Oh look, things are going well. Right. Next, we're going to mark out the holes for the front, which will be another type of tricky to cut out. Huh. Hadn't really thought that bit through. Let's mark it out and decide how to do it. What I forgot is I think we should keep this drying up well, gluing and then drying first. So I'm going to get a bit of glue, then I'm going to staple it together just to hold these corners, and we'll use a square to make sure that we're putting it together right. Way more than I need. I'll whack a bit on that end. So I'm going to use the grid here to roughly line up that and hope that it's square. I say that, there's a slight difference there. And an actual square comes in very handy for this sort of work. There we go, that looks pretty good. I can feel that there's a nice clean join there. Now I'm just going to put a staple in, which should help it just hold together while the paint while the glue dries. There we go, so I'm going to get my fingers well out of the way, just in case I've lined this up badly. Actually use a little bit more glue there. A hot day while I'm doing this. Looks like it's going to dry very quickly. Okay, and staple. And We'll go back to marking out the front, which is what I said we were doing to start with. This is all going to be waste. It needs to be cut out somehow. This is the bit I was thinking was going to be a little bit tricky. I'm still thinking it's going to be a little bit tricky. What I also want to do is round these edges a wee bit. There's very seldom any sort of sharp edges on the Star Trek readouts. So I just want to get a nice little diameter there. To do that, I'm going to use a washer, I think. Okay, here we go. I've got a variety of washers. Just kind of try and find it. it looks like it meets the right diameter of curves there. I'm inclined toward to go one of these and this medium one here. So matching that up on each side and just tracing it out. What I'm going to try and do is find a drill with the same diameter as that, so I can go straight through in each corner, and I'll go to the scroll saw to cut out the rest. And very carefully go through in that area. Now the fun bit, trying to cut a nice straight line around these edges to make sure we've got a professional looking product in the end. Right, to the scroll saw!
Alright, fingers crossed. still but I'm quite liking the overall style and it means that we can have a look for the first time at what this is going to look like when sandwiched together with the other pieces. Then the transparency which is going to be trimmed down to fit. Then we're going to have some perspex over the top keeping that all safe. And then we're going to have the screen fitted on top of that, roughly like so. Now you can see where we're going. We've got quite a lot of clean up to do on this still. So let's get back to that. We're going to file out the corners, then we're going to use the router to give us a nice round edge, then we'll attach to the box and see where we're going at that point. Okay. Okay, so that's set a nice bevel around the viewing window there. I'm just going to get a little bit of sandpaper and even that down so there's not a defined line there anymore. Here's that wee box we glued up earlier. And what I thought I'd do is just double check that everything's fitting together right. Nice and square and a good fit. I did this off camera and what you'll see is the tracing board fits inside quite nicely and the cover will go on top like so, except there's a little gap at each end. What I've done is I've cut this the same length as the side and set up to cover the entire Thing. So there's a gap at one end. What I've done is cut a piece of wood exactly the same size as that gap. Ah, right. It's better to flat. I carried on doing a little bit of work in the meantime anyway. I'm sure you don't mind. I'll show you what we got up to though. <clears throat> so I was just explaining I'd cut the top a little bit short and calculated the width of the frame into it. So I cut out a little piece of extra wood, glued it on the side, sanded it flat. Once it's painted we won't even know. What else have I done? I used the same router to round over the edges of the box. I glued the top onto the box and I've been checking that everything is a good fit still. So it all fits in there like so. I'll have a bit of a clean up then we'll do a test fit and carry on with the rest of the stages. I'd also drawn on a small square there for the um, the on button, I suppose we'll call it. Lights just gone off. Sure, why not? Um, I've just got to tidy up the edge of the perspex, make sure that that fits well. That's been rounded over. I'll give it a little bit more sanding, and then we're going to be painting it up. Okay. Wanted light bulbs. Hello. Okay. That's better. Now, um, <clears throat> oh, tidying, I suppose. Right. I 
I should point out, I want to use some pliers to pull the staples out of the end of the box. My plan is to paint over that area and sand it, paint over it a few more times, so the staples were just going to get in the way. Just put a, used a I just used a pair of pliers to whip those out really quickly, but only been there to hold the frame together while it drives away. A bit of a test. Okay, so we've got a frame that's looking pretty respectable now. It's a little bit more of a sand. We've got this piece of perspex. Which you see just fits into the back. Like so. Then we've got our artwork. I've already trimmed a slight bit off the edge of this. We're going to be doing a little bit more as well. And that can go in here like so. Then the light box is going to go behind that. As you can see we're making a bit of a sandwich. Plug the power back into that and add the battery pack. What we're also going to be doing is adding a couple of support pieces across the back of this so that when the panel's held upright it keeps the light frame tight to the front. And here's the overall effect. As you can see we've got to line up the artwork, get it just so, but we've got a nice solid looking panel with a power button that will be available. And give us that really dazzling effect on the end. Start by taking off a little bit less than I was saying, just to make sure we don't go too far too fast. Okay, so ordinarily for a good paint job, nice and smooth finish, you'd want to wash your item, make sure that you've removed any sand, oil, dust, particles. In this case, I actually want some texture. It doesn't matter if it's completely perfect and smooth, but I'm hoping the paint's going to fill these little seams, the gaps, and cover over those tiny little errors, which afterwards I'm going to claim we never there to start with. Extremely expensive paint can prying tool, available through my affiliate links on Amazon. Um, I found a colour that was really quite nice, opened the paint can, started leaking all over the bench, so I added it to another paint can that was already here with some white paint. The resulting blend is an amazing match for exactly the colour I was going for to start with. And that's my story to that end. I've been using the same paint stick for probably 15 years. It was that thin to start with. It's about four times that size at the end now. One day I hope to cut it open and see all the different lives that it's lived, all the different projects that it's been through and a part of. And what I'm going to do is paint it on fairly roughly with a paintbrush and because I won't get nice smooth seamless looking parts I'm going to then go over with a roller to give it a nice texture and that texture is going to hide where all the joins happened. What I will do is start by painting the inside just to help give a nice harmonious finish to it all and once it's done we'll flip it over, won't need to come back to the inside because it simply doesn't matter. Putting it on nice and thick at this stage. Because I've made this out of MDF, a certain amount is going to soak into it. Won't be enough to make it swell up like sitting MDF in water, but it might mean that the paint needs a couple of layers to really achieve its full thickness and colour.
display here where I'm painting this. You can already see the paint's absorbing quite well. That's almost a little bit tacky on some faces. Putting on a nice thick layer, because when I go over the roller, that's going to take some of the paint off. Well, it doesn't take off, it's going to redistribute into a nice um, grain that doesn't have any direction. And that's going to be really good at hiding our little floors as well. Painting floors, construction floors, all of those floors. So this is going to get that nice stippled texture. That was a feature of next generation equipment. I'm pretty sure it's more for the same reasons. That's nice and smooth. Now, I'll show you the next steps. We've already cut this down. I've cleaned the perspex, which is going to be going on the front. What I've also done is create and print out on transparent film used with the old overhead projectors, or we start the delta icon. That's going to go behind here and become the start button, or it's changed to one of the others. As you can see, I did a few spears just in case because uh, this has been one of those projects where <laughs> Sometimes it's not working out perfectly the first time. Okay. What I'm going to do is tape that in place. Okay, so that's going to hold that nicely in place. Now the question is for behind that. So I'll just do a strip of that. Like so. Next item. Now we're going to add the perspex into here. As I said, I gave it a good clean yesterday. So that's now looking about as good as it's going to get. Actually, since I've got the tissue, let's go on final polish. drop this in. <laughs> Hoping the paint hasn't narrowed it too much. Did the paint seriously narrow it that much? Surely not. Surely not. Did it swell up just a millimetre on either side? Surely not. Huh. It's okay at this end, which is nice to know. But it's really out by about a millimetre or more at this end. How did that happen? It's all right in the middle. Just right at the end. It's just the end where it has to go though, isn't it? Classic. Um, Alright, I'll be right back. <coughs> okay, so back again. Oh dear. <sighs> I've just run this through the table saw and sanded off the edges a wee bit. As far as I can see, everything's still holding together just fine. You'll see the lost a little bit of adhesion there between the layers not going to matter when we've got it all glued in place. I will just do a quick test, make sure that it still works. Okay, looking good. Thank goodness. And back to our first bits. Which 
has a little bit of streaking now just from the dust that's running through the saw. Static doesn't help much either. Oh Christ, look, I'm just going to wipe that off again properly. <laughs> Maybe this time. Okay. What I did is I just gave that a wee wash. Seem to have moved most of the static, which I'm now somehow reintroducing. I'm going to pop that down like so. Now we're going to pop it down. And try and get its placement right. the other day, we're going to put a couple of these blocks in, not those ones, uh, some other ones I've cut down, somewhere, okay, so I'm going to cut a couple, <laughs> I'm going to cut a couple of these to fit in like so, and we'll just hot glue those in place, so that'll keep the pressure on the pad. So now, when we have a look at this, nice display we've got what should be a working power button and then down the bottom we're going to be adding in this area one of those other stickers so let's just check and make sure everything looks like it's working correctly okay so what i've misplaced here is the depth of the perspex so this sticker actually needs to be above the power button and over the other side of the plastic. So I'll quickly do that. try putting all this back in again. There we go, okay. Proof of concept if nothing else. One, two, three, and off. All right, so I've cut my strips down to size. I'm just going to hot glue those in place. This is going to provide some bracing behind the control pad so that when this is turned on, it won't flex too much, hopefully. We whiskers. I think probably. Yep, that's cooled down. It's time to give it a wee test again. You know what I've done? Let's <laughs> just tuck that in the bottom. He's back! So, this is me breaking it off. Ow, 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 hot. Ha! Ah. Oh, okay. Breaking off. <laughs> oh, help. Sticking it on the top instead. <clears throat> At least I don't know which side it shouldn't be now. Oh, crikey. This is so embarrassing. <laughs> Goodness me. Right, <laughs> maybe this time. I'll turn off a little bit of the lighting and plug in the power. Good, and we'll check the power's working. Yes, there's a blue light. We should be able to see this come on. One. Why 
is it flexing so much? Yes, including the wood. The wood's flexing too. Okay, so uh, battery ran out on the camera. <coughs> Again, this is taking a little bit longer than I thought. Where have we got to? I seem to have splashed a little bit of paint on the front of the uh, deck here. I've added another panel with hot glue reinforcing this so it hopefully it won't flex as much when I'm trying to turn the power on and off. And you see I've started adding a little bit of detail pinstriping just to give it a little bit more authenticity, That's on camera at least. In real life, there's little pieces of adhesive vinyl cut up and applied. I've also used one of the production made stickers. I've applied it to some of the overhead transparency acetate so that it can be removed if necessary and we're going to be sticking that down here with double sided tape. So now I'm just going to add a little bit more of this pinstriping see if we can add some more authenticity to this box. It's always getting it started that I struggle with and after the getting it started it's the applying it straight that I struggle with after that. Yeah, that was exciting footage, I'm sure. Now we'll try and press this down carefully into place. Both from the back, there's a little bit of light leakage, but it's all contained within the box. But from the front, let me turn the lights down. That's looking pretty nice. Fine addition to somebody's living room, bedroom, bathroom, or a workspace, potentially. present. Perhaps more importantly, I've learned something. I've learned lots of things along the way, and the next one we make will be even better. So to Brad, happy birthday. This one's for you, bud. Enjoy. Is this is the gift and recognition of an anniversary of a bird. May I say, live long and prosper. <laughs> 